talking about vacations, and uh, July is really, I think, the big crux of, of, of vacations, but the theme for every Sunday morning in July has been vacations, but remember that our consciousness never takes a vacation. So our vacation, whether we like it, whether we not like it or not, but our consciousness is always present, it's always available, it's always aware. So our consciousness goes ahead of us and it kind of like prepaves the way. It prepaves the way for our experience. And our consciousness really is our awareness, our thoughts, our desires, all of our emotions. So what we're expecting is in our consciousness so it prepaves our experience for us. Today we continue this theme with a question. Have you ever been driving to your vacation and you might have encountered a roadblock? It could be something that might slow you down for a few minutes, for a couple of hours. Perhaps you even had to make a detour and go back. Or perhaps you couldn't get there at all. Anyone have that <coughs> kind of, yeah. It happens everywhere, even on planes, a lot of planes. So how are roadblocks a metaphor, because we're doing all metaphors in July, metaphors for our consciousness? Well, we build roadblocks in our consciousness all the time. So this morning's fuel for conversation is this question. Is your consciousness allowing the fullness of God to express through you? Or has it set up roadblocks? <coughs> has it set up roadblocks? Are you being God's way or are you in God's way? To begin today's uh, theme, I want to share two statements that can seem quite paradoxical. <coughs> Ernest Holmes, founder of Science of Mind, once said, Spirit put the stamp of individuality upon itself and it calls itself you. And Ralph Waldo Emerson, who we are reading in Roots of Science of Mind class right now, had a huge influence on Ernest Holmes and his, his founding of religious science. And he said, we must get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. So it seems like a contradiction there. Which is it? Which is it? Are we spirit individualized or are we bloated nothingness? So this beautiful, well this paradox is beautifully illustrated in a really great story that I've heard before, but it really fits in so nicely here that I wanted to, to tell it. And it's from the first Chicken Soup for the Soul book. It's the story of a group of monks who had in their monastery a big giant clay Buddha that was over ten and a half feet tall and two and a half tons heavy very, very large, and this is in 1957, and, and the monastery was being relocated. So everything, including this giant Buddha, had to be moved. And when the crane began to lift it, this giant statue, the weight of it was so enormous and tremendous that it began to crack. And what's more, it started to rain. So the head monk went and got a tarp, and he decided to leave the Buddha on the ground and to cover the Buddha with the tarp to keep it dry. And then he would try to move it again tomorrow. So later that evening, that same head monk went back and he peeked under the tarp to make sure that the clay on the Buddha was you know, still dry. And he shined his flashlight, because it was nighttime, under the tarp to see it. And what he saw was this glistening. He, it, it, this glistening. And it was a little gleam, and it, shone, it shined back at him. And he thought, how strange. So he took a closer look. And this gleam of light, there might be something underneath the clay. So he decided to get a, a hammer and a chisel. And he very carefully just chiseled away a little bit of the clay to see what this light was. And as he knocked off these small shards of clay, the little gleam grew brighter and brighter. Many hours of labor went by because he you know, he's chipping away at this thing. And the most extraordinary thing took place. What he discovered was this was a solid gold Buddha. Now this is a true story. Historians now believe 
that several hundred years before the head monk's discovery, the Burmese army was <coughs> about to invade Thailand. And the monks at that time, realizing the country was under siege, covered up this gold, this pure gold Buddha with clay to disguise it. And it was priceless. And the, the thing that happened was all of those monks were killed in the invasion. And so what was left was this big clay, beautiful Buddha. And it wasn't until 1957 when this, this monastery and this monk started chipping away that they found that this, this Buddha was solid gold. And why I'm bringing that story up is because spirit put the stamp of individuality on each and every one of us. And that's the golden part. That's the golden part. We must get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. That's the clay. That's the clay. We are so covered up with clay, all of our beliefs that we have formed, all of that stuff that we have formed around our golden part, sometimes we can't get in touch with that, that beauty that glistening, that glorious treasure that's within each and every one of us, that we really are. And so we use this metaphor today because our job is to remove the clay, to remove the blocks, to chip away. And that's what we do here on Sunday services, in Sunday services. This is what we do in our classes, is that we chip away at the clay, those old beliefs that no longer serve, and we get in touch with that gold inside of us. We get in touch with that. And I really love the phrase, you are golden, because you know it, it just really is the truth. So you can all know that you are golden. That is the truth of each and every one. And so using this metaphor for today, our job is to remove the roadblocks, the clay of our consciousness, the clay of our consciousness so that we might express our divinity, get to the gold, get to that gold that's within each and every one of us. The truth is, you are the way of God. That is the absolute truth. You are the way of God. Mm -hmm. Ernest Holmes tells us, God works for us by working through us. God works for us by working through us. So, say out loud with me or after me. I am the way of God. I am the way of God. Say it again. I am the way of God. Beautiful. In the eye of the storm, Gary Simmons wrote, You are the way of God. Your entire being is cheated, is created to be an expression of God. Everything real in you gives expression to God. Sometimes, however, you are in the way of God's expressing through you. It's important for you to know the difference between when you are being the way of God and when you are in the way of God. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. Imagine that you're picking up a young child and you're holding him or her really close to you. You can feel the love flowing. You can feel that love flowing. When you love the child, you can feel God's love. Can you? You can just feel it. It flows through you. You can feel it. It's so pure. It's so innocent. You know, the clay hasn't been formed yet around that gold. The gold is pure. It's essence. It's gorgeous. It's light. Whenever you are allowing God to move through you, you are the way of God. The way of God. A child's purity lets you know that this is love expressing through you. So the fullness of love can be shared. It absolutely can be shared. And in your experience of being the way of God, is there any lack? Is there anything missing as you're holding in, in that moment with that child, with that pure energy? Because you are fully abundant in that. The love is the abundance. Herein is the, is the demonstration then of the true abundance. So when you are the way of God, the, the experience, the abundant life that Jesus talked about is that I have come so that you might live life and live it more abundantly. And live it more abundantly. Now here comes 
the, ex the experiment part. This, is the, this could be the tricky part. Imagine someone who has hurt or treated you really not very well. Hurt you unfairly. See this person in front of you. As you did that young child. What's the difference? What's the difference? Now you are the way of God, or are you in the way of God? You can feel the energy in your body. You can feel it in your body. You know it. You know when you're in the flow. You know when the love is flowing through you. You know when it's not. So the difficulty that you may feel in this person is, you may feel in loving this person really is kind of the challenge, but it is the way of and sometimes you can just accept them, because you can't move to that love part quite yet. But it's the way of God, instead of the reverse, being in God's way. Because when our ego gets involved, it can be extremely challenging to see the good in, in some people. It can really be challenging. No doubt you've all had justifications for the way you feel about certain people. Yeah, we all have a story that goes around it. The good reasons for not warming up to that person. But can you see you are literally in the way of God? And that means you're blocking your flow of good, your golden self. You're blocking it when you're in that angle, when you're in that resentment, when you're in that place of unforgiveness. You're blocking the flow of God, and that's the way of God. Is this person any less deserving of God's love? In fact, this person probably, usually, if we can get to that place, needs more love than anyone else. Probably needs more love. And if you could see the person that is in front of you that might cause these feelings as that child that you so lovingly felt the love from, then that's the difference in being the way of God and being in the way of God. And it frees you up from being hurt and disappointment. We do this work, and it's forgiveness work too, we do this work for us so that we are free. So that we are free. We're not stuck, you know, in that whole victim role and in that whole story that, that we have about people. So it's always going to be about love. Love or fear. Nothing else. Our intention is not to make excuses for others. That's not our intention. If they have hurtful behavior, it's not our intention to make excuses, <coughs> but rather to awaken in the deepest sense <coughs> to that which is the image and likeness of God. The golden part. That's our golden part. We all have it. I love that whole image, because I see all you see the gold light within me. So it's the golden part, so God's self. This perception is necessary, though, to have a full understanding of spiritual healing. Talk about spiritual healing. Well, what is it? It's the revealing of God within us. That's what spiritual healing is. That's the only thing we really have to get to. It sounds simple, but we spend our whole lives connecting to the revelation that there is within us a divine golden essence that's connected to the great unity of life. The all that is, the great I am, the wholeness, the wholeness of God. A good, a good illustration of this idea centers around a man that could be asleep on a bed, and he's having a nightmare, okay? And he's like filled, filled with fear and terror, and he's being covered with all the snow and, and all of these winds blowing at him, and you want to help him. So you imagine that you're inside his head. So how would you help him? You'd wake him up. You would wake him up. So our job, our job is to awake from the dream that we are anything other than the way of God. That's our true self. That's the self that goes on forever. That's our eternal golden self. Meister Eckhart, the German theologian who lived in the late 1200s and early 1300s said, God is bound to act, to pour himself into thee as soon as he finds thee ready. That means a bloated nothingness, the clay self. We get that out of the way. And then he goes on. God expects but one thing of you. That is that you should come out of yourself insofar as you 
are a creator, a creative being, and let God be God in you. <clears throat> so what does being, what does being the way of God look like? What does it look like? And what does it not look like? It's really good to understand these things we talk about. It's like I, I say, we have a lot of pretty words and we have a lot of great concepts, mm. but let's deepen into the understanding of them. Let's use this practicality. This is a practical spirituality. Ernest Holmes talks about that all the time. This is something to use in your life, the spiritual teachings. So what does the way of good, or God, because that's interchangeable, good and God, look like? From the Tao Te Ching, that Lezol wrote in 500 BCE, you are born soft and, soft and supple. Dead, we are stiff and hard. Plants are born tender and pliant. Dead, they are dry and brittle. Thus, whoever is stiff and inflexible is a disciple of death. Mm -hmm. Whoever is soft and yielding is a disciple of life. So would you rather be dead? <laughs> would you rather be in life? And we know that our souls are eternal. It's the physical form. The physical form. If you are, if you are judging, blaming, fearful, dishonest, hurtful, unwilling, unforgiving, doubtful, rigid, stubborn, unkind, resentful, feel unworthy, or just plain negative, you are likely in the way of God. These are, these are the, the indications that let you know if you're in the flow, if you're the way of God, or if you're in the way of letting God express through you. Now, if God's expressing through you, you are open, you are willing, you are flexible, you are affirming, you are accepting of self and others. You are the radiating life of God in all that you do. You can feel it. You can feel when you are in the flow. You can feel it when you're in these higher frequencies, these higher vibrations of being, mm -hmm. in our energetic field of, of being who we truly are. Golden. We're golden. If a conversation becomes blaming or condescending, if you find yourself in, because I know lots of times we do, we're in, we're, you know, we come and we're all like lifted up and then we go to work Monday morning or something, and the conversation becomes this whole judging, resentful kind of thing. So that you can radiate, you can radiate the life of God by just being open and just being, just being, radiating the life, the flow of God. You don't have to partake in it. You can hold the higher vision by being flexible. It's like flexibility. I was thinking about this this morning. Flexibility truly is being in the flow of life. When you're open to, to, you know, all different opportunities and it's not exactly the way you might have planned it or the way you think it's supposed to look, you're being the way of God. I was loving that. So if people are stuck in a terrible situation and it looks, it looks really bad and you can gently be the person that can remind them that there is a light, there is a light shining. Just have faith, there is a light shining. And thereby being a vehicle for creation. Because you know that is a fundamental law of life. As we see the greater possibilities in life, we create those possibilities. We create them. We are creative beings. If someone gets upset and you help him or her to look on the bright side and not take things too seriously about the opinions of others whose only purpose it is is to rain on your parade. Does anyone ever mean anyone like that? Like the whole purpose in life is to rain on your parade? <laughs> oh, like that. Get the umbrella out, right? There are some people and so we can just know that, you know, our umbrella is just the umbrella of light itself. So we can hold that space. So we can hold that space. And so you can bring a playful energy into these situations as you fill yourself with that, that energy that you are the way of God. You are the way of God. That's when you're, like I said, you're really in the flow. When you're in the flow, we've talked about this, things come to you. 
great opportunities come because you're not trying to make it happen. You're not out there and pushing and pushing and pushing because that's the way we've been taught to make things happen. You allow it. You allow it. You be flexible. You be open. You be willing. And it's amazing. So once I got out of my own way, it was absolutely amazing the things that took place. I was like, wow, this really works. Oh, the stuff I've been studying for all these years works. So let's use it. New Thought writer Eric Butterworth, who we love, he talks about this when he says, there is something within us that can lead us and direct us if we will but let it. It is higher than the thought of any man. It has nothing to do with creed or profession or confession or the restrictions of theologic, theological dogmas. It is the integrity. It is the integrity of our own mind. In the silence, he says, of our own mind and our own soul, that is where we find the immediate presence of the divine being inhabiting and the universe. It inhabits us and it inhabits the universe. It is the presence within us which every great thinker has sensed, which all the poets have sung about and all the great spiritual teachers have proclaimed. We are told, he writes, to repair to our own mind and get away from the objective confusion and struggle of life and enter the secret place. We enter this directly. We need no guide, no mediation. You do this yourself. Isn't that great? We need no mediation. You're not fancy. You've got to find a girl. You can do it yourself. Okay? There is nothing that can keep us from it. Really. There is nothing that can keep us from it. There is no power which withholds it from us. It is ours to accept. So the question would be then, are you open to accept? Are you really want to do this work and, 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 and accept the good? Because it's there. It's there. And so I shared a statement um, two weeks ago from the Sufi poet Rumi on the, it was the first series of this talks on vacations. I want to share it again this morning because it's, it's just so beautiful. But he says, Our, um, out beyond ideas of right and wrong, there is a field. <coughs> I will meet you there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we met in that field two weeks ago, and we did a very powerful meditation, which I'm not going to do again. It was a circle of love meditation. It was really mm -hmm. lovely. And, but I want us to feel that, that field again, that place beyond all right and wrong, that, that place where it's just, it just is all love. It is all God, because it does <coughs> exist. <clears throat> so if you, I invite you to just close your eyes for a second and really briefly, we're going to travel to that field. Just see the field of infinite possibilities. All things are possible in this field. It is the land of the great I am. Let's go there now. Let's go there now. Letting go of all preconceived ideas that no longer serve, opening to the easy and effortless flow of limitless good that is always present. This flow of golden light is always present, always available. This is the place where you are willing, where you are flexible, affirming, accepting, where you radiate your higher self, your divine nature, and all that you say and all that you do. Letting go, surrendering attachment to judgment, to blaming, fear, anger, unforgiveness. We meet in that field beyond right or wrong. And so I speak this word right here, right now, knowing there is a power for good. And this power is always present, for it is in all things that has created all that is, was, and ever shall be. It is the great I am. It is God itself. It is 
the good expressing itself into creation. The highest aspect of the divine is creation. And so each and every one is a part of this creation, this unity of one life that is filled, filled with perfect harmony, filled with divine right order, filled with love, filled with light because the energy of the divine is this pure golden light and it creates all of life out of itself. And so therefore each and every one truly is at the very core of their being, the very soul, the very essence, that eternal part of each and every one is filled with this light of goodness itself. And so I claim this goodness come forth in each one's life. That each one is the way of God. That each one is in that flow of that essence of light moving through them. And I give thanks for this knowing. I give thanks for this infinite good <coughs> that I know is expressing <coughs> in a myriad of ways in each and every one's life. And so in that gratitude, in that absolute thanksgiving then, I release this word fully and completely knowing it is absolutely done, demonstrated, manifested in the most magnificent forms and activities and expressions in each and every one's life. And so knowing this to be truth spoken, I let it be, and so it is. Amen. So it is. So it is. Amen.